Sermon titled, Spiritual Gifts, Gifts of the Holy Spirit, by Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez. Amazing how the Spirit of God will line things up so well. We didn't even know what our Bible study topic was today, right? <laughs> we didn't even know what it was, and then just 
from worship to the discussion and everything just coming together in a just harmonious way. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, withholding nothing. Amen. Ah, certainly, church, I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, hey, whether you deserve it or not, God's been faithful and good to you this week. Can we give a great hand clap of praise? Even when we're not faithful, when I'm not faithful, He is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Online viewers, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez, Living on the Rock Ministries. I pray, we pray, and hope and trust that today's message find you all well. Amen. Um, let's do a quick adjustment. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Quick announcement. There's still a little bit of thought, and we're probably going to adjust some dates. Originally, we had the back to school uh, event um, scheduled for the 13th. I believe this this uh, July we'll still have it, but I think that we're going to do it just back to back with a Sunday service. Um, so more on that to come. Uh, please keep it in prayer. We've got youth today. Amen. Uh, can I have the youth to please stand? Hallelujah. All right. Let us pray for our youth and teacher. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our kids. Your word is very clear. Do not hinder the kids to get to know the Christ. And here today, Lord, we pray that uh, the anointing of your Holy Spirit would be upon the hearts of the children. Open their hearts up to receive the seeds of life, that they would be deposited on good soil, take deep root, and out of their obedience to you, Lord, produce much fruit. Lord, we pray a double portion anointing upon the teacher today. We pray that it comes simple, effective, and opens up the understanding of those who hear and incline their ear to your word here today. Anoint the teacher, anoint the children. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Children and teacher, you are dismissed. Church, if I could have us to stand, please. Prepare our heart for the word of God. Heavenly Father, like the song said right now, we surrender. Captivate our heart right now, O oh God, and open up our heart to your word on here today as we talk about spiritual gifts. Lord, you've had me in the stream, in the vein for a while on spirituality. Here today, Lord, I believe that we're at a point in our lives where we need to teach more and believe more in the unseen realm, which is influencing much of the things of the physical realm. But Father, I pray you give us greater understanding of the gifts, the precious gifts, the free gifts that comes from Christ Jesus. And when he went to be with you, Lord, sitting at your right hand, he said, I bring you an advocate. And I don't give like the world gives, but he gives freely and, and the Holy Spirit the great spirit, our hope of people call him my side. The one and the same spirit is he who gives us these spiritual gifts. And as we incline our ear to you on here today, give us spiritual depth of understanding. I believe our group is ready. I believe this congregation is ready to go higher in the, in the spiritual teachings, oh God. Holy Spirit, as your word would say, give us ears to hear what your spirit says from on high. In Jesus' mighty matchless name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, church. Hallelujah. Last week it was an on-time message, right, that uh, God would begin to open up our understanding what we call the spiritual warfare. 
what the true armor of God means, right, spiritually. And I believe it was a blessing because in this season we're seeing a lot of things being fulfilled that were end time prophecies, right? Even our hoping people call this time the, the season of purification. You know, it's the same season. And so when you have the spiritual, uh, uh, the spirit of God active in you, he opens up our understanding. He gives us this word, what we call in the spirit, the discerning of spirits or the distinguishing of spirits. What's an operation? So last week, we got to dive into what is that spirit behind that which is manifesting in the physical, right? And so it opened up our understanding, the, the book of Ephesians in chapter 6, the full armor of God, not just by, you know, preaching or, you know, saying all oh, the full armor of God as a cliche, but that it had a depth of spiritual awakening in us and a blessing to be that which we can start combating through prayer against much wickedness that is trying to advance even in our own homes. Amen. So in the vein of spiritual teaching and, and allowing the word of God do what the word do, amen. Let the word do what it do. Have faith that it will do something great, that faith cometh by hearing spiritually and by hearing the word of God. Amen. And if the word of God in the book of Hebrews says that, hey, uh, uh, it is alive, <laughs> it is active, it is sharper than any, it's convicting as any two-edged sword, that should be our expectation when we get into the spiritual read of the word of God, that it would be supernaturally awakening and supernaturally given to us with supernatural understanding. Amen. So we're going to talk about spiritual gifts today, but lead in scripture, if you would turn with me to the book of John, book of John chapter 14, and we're going to kind of do a two-part uh, uh, scriptural read from the book of John, first in chapter 14, then in chapter 16, but they, they connect, they parallel there. We need them both together for the message that I brought forth here today. So, book of John, chapter 14, we're going to read from verses 25 through 27. When you get there, say amen. Book of John, chapter 14. at verses 25 and 27. And in my study Bible, NIV Bible, it is subtitled here, Jesus Promises the Holy Spirit. Jesus Promises the Holy Spirit. And the word of the Lord reads, All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Look to your neighbor and say, all things. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So not only is the Spirit of God the one who teaches, it is the Spirit of God who reminds us when we need reminding. I've stood up here sometimes, right, and said, Holy Spirit... Please remind me, and then it might be during the conversation, and, and then he, he, he brings it back to me. And other times, he's, he's faithful to bring it to me right then and there, too, right? But he, he, the beauty about that is he teaches us all things, and he reminds us of all the, the things that he has taught us through Christ Jesus' testimony. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Uh, same book, now we're going to go to chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Same book, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. And the word of the Lord reads, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, look to your neighbor and say, the spirit of truth, how do we know when we get divine understanding, when God lines up his...
this truth in a supernatural way. Sometimes we stand in awe of God and we're just like shivering in the spirit and our hair is standing up on high because he has a way of divinely letting us know when truth is in the house. Amen. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Amen. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Again, the title of my message today is Spiritual Gifts. Spiritual Gifts. I have been waiting patiently for this day to come to teach on the spiritual gifts. And uh, prayerfully, God has shown that we are ready to take that next level of, of teaching of spiritual things, right? And it's even a challenge for me because I have faith, right? And I can't force that faith on it, that belief on anybody else. It cometh spiritually and it had to deal with me. Right? But when God called me to teach under the anointing of God, right? This is one of those areas where we talk about spiritual things. It is one of the greatest challenges to teach spiritual things. Amen. It's a challenge, but hey, we're all here today. God's grace found us and we're all here together. I accepted the challenge too. But like Jesus, right? The teacher, the greatest teacher, even with his disciples, right? would teach spiritual things. He would have to break it down to its, what we call in mathematics, the lowest common denominator, right? The equation, the problem of the mathematic problem may look intimidating, but as you're given tools to, to start breaking it down and then this big problem gets smaller, it's condensed further and further and that's how the spirit of God works in us even through like short stories and parables. Right? Storytelling is no new thing. Our ancestors used uh, short stories to speak of things spiritual. But God would use Jesus to, to even use storytelling to break something down spiritually, even symbolically, so that you would understand something that is spoken of physically, metaphorically, at a chance to receive it spiritually. Amen? And uh, so... I'm really excited because Jesus made it very clear, you know, I don't give like the world. You know, most, I, I, thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven me from this, but I used to once be a lover of money. And yet the word of God says, don't love money. It's the root of all evil, right? I, I once was a very bad, wicked person, but it was the love of God that found me in the midst of all that that clean this wretch up, right? And that's why we get, you know, a beautiful song, uh, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. I mean, how, I couldn't imagine God taking that filthy, dirty, rag sinner and then putting me behind a pulpit with some courage to preach the Word of God. I mean, I would have never, never, ever thought that, but that's His amazing grace, right? But he says, I don't give like the world. Us who love money and value money you know, much of the world does that, right? We're taught, we, 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 we're, we're programmed to think work, 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 money, 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 money. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we hear these terms. I, I learned it. I used to speak it. <laughs> Cash is king. Who's heard of that before? Cash is king. Oh, come on now. You never heard of that? Some of you have. Cash is king, you know? But no, he ain't. I read in the book of Revelations that the, the end of all things, Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. 
are hoping people say, uh, what, Mama Edith? Masao is the first, and he will be the last. Guess what? Same King of Kings, who has total testimonial and authority, both over death and life. But he says, I don't give like the world. You want a price tag on everything, you know? <laughs> right? I once used to expect a price tag on it. Oh, you want me to work a, a, a couple hours this weekend? Well, you're going to have to pay me double time, right? You're going to have to, there's a price tag attached to everything. Not Jesus. And he gives this spiritual gift, he's saying quite simply, uh, disciples, you can't fully understand and comprehend spiritual things now because I was in the physical for you. There comes a day where I got to challenge you spiritually when I'm out of the scene because blessed are those who believe in the testimony of Christ that have never seen them. That speaks to you and me today. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Huh? Something that has to force us in our own faith and believing even what Enoch spoke of in the unseen world is the spiritual realm versus the physical seen realm. We have to learn how to, what Jesus says, everything that you see in the physical will one day pass away, be gone. But my word and that which is unseen shall stand forever. He was teaching us spiritual unseen things to build our faith. And when Jesus became out of the scene, what a beautiful thing happened on the day of Pentecost that was spoken of even in the book of uh, Joel, I believe. That there's coming a day when the Messiah will come and he depart and be back with the Father. That God from heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, would pour out his great spirit upon what? All flesh. Jew or Gentile. Black, white, red, yellow, and any blend of God's children as he see fit. Right? And so that was a beautiful promise by God. Fulfilled. And even Jesus was saying, this day is going to come. And when it does, my advocate will what? Teach you and remind you. I need to be reminded sometimes. Sometimes I want to act a fool up in here, up in here, and then a symbol like the cross that reminds me of God's beautiful grace and salvation over my life will take this knucklehead and say, hey, you better rethink some things. You better not say those things, right? Who do you think is, who's that advocate working on my behalf because I believe in him? Who's that invisible voice saying, don't you say that? You're going to regret it. And then it causes me to keep my mouth shut because it's like I'm flared up in my flesh right now. I'm flared up in my emotions and I just want to say something I shouldn't say. Hello, somebody. I'm not the only crook up in here. Amen. We all crooks up in here saying, my goodness. But that's the voice of the advocate, the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Many of us give our conscience way too much credit. Oh, that was my conscience saying, no, 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 no. That was a gift from God saying, hey, don't say that. <laughs> Honor and value that, but that's what Jesus is saying here. And then, peace I leave with you, right? What is the, the characteristics of God? Before we get into the gifts, I want us to understand the Spirit of God does not lead us into destruction and partaking in more destruction on the earth. No, 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 no. The true, unadulterated, pure Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit, his objective, when we listen to him, is to do our best to bring peace. So the true doctrine, when you think about even the history of where we're standing on right now, much of what we stand on was built from hypocrisy. Because the true gospel challenges us not to bring war anymore because the old covenant is done away with. Jesus ushered in on a donkey the new covenant, shed his blood, which symbolic to his blood covenant that was prophesied in Old Testament. So now 
Don't you think we're seeing some things really messed up out there and even in the name of Jesus acting out of great hypocrisy? Hello? Jesus is not attached to any hypocrisy and the Spirit of God keeps us from being hypocrites ourselves. Right? It's not what you learned in the hood though, right? You were soft if you were honest. You were soft if you, you know, uh, uh, took responsibility for something that you should have done, but yet that's what we should be doing and that's what the gospel teaches us to do. So we're challenged when the Spirit of God is active and I've laid hands on many of you. I've seen the evidence in many of you through prophetic dreams or a word of knowledge and we'll talk about some of these things, but I've seen the evidence of the active gift in you. You know, we give water baptism is very symbolic to the remission in the blood of Christ. You know, if you could imagine the blood being shed for all past, present, and future sins. His blood was the price he shed as the perfect lamb sacrifice. That's why we don't need animal sacrifices no more. He was the one and only perfect lamb sacrifice. When you appreciate what he's done for you and you get that water baptism symbolic of their appreciation of his blood in public setting because the word of God says, when you honor me in the name of Christ Jesus before your brothers and sisters on this earth, in heaven, in, with the hosts of the elect angels, will I honor you then. It's an unashamed public declaration that Lord, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. It is the greatest thing that we can do to honor God in that way. But guess what, folks? John the Baptist prophesied also that, hey, there's coming a day that there's a baptism by the Spirit of God and by the fire of God that will come on you. And we got to see the evidence of this the day of Pentecost when the, when the roar of rushing waters came and everybody came with humble heart. We go out now that so many churches are out there advertising and, and commercializing revival. And hello somebody, many times there's no spirit of God. I don't care how much you say revival is going to come. Revival, no, God's got to bring it. When you come humble, when you bring your pain, the grace of God from heaven will bring his reign. But you commercialize this to make money and call it a revival. I don't care how many times you do that. If the spirit of God ain't there, he's not being glorified. But the day of Pentecost, everybody was in one accord, broken before the presence of God. I'm toe up from the flow of Lord. I need some salvation. I need some grace on me. And from Jews and Gentiles, I can only imagine as heaven one day will be a kingdom that give us foreshadowing, diverse, from every nation, tongue, and tribe was representative on the day of Pentecost because from, from Jews to Gentiles and women, children, and men, old, you know, you, you name it, the diversity was established, but the Spirit of God did not discriminate. He was poured out upon all flesh. Some people, even back then, got the Holy Ghost baptism before they even got the water baptism. And usually you get the water baptism first, but you know God can change in all his majesty. He can change the order of whatever you want to do. Amen. But as long as you're submitted and you're surrendered as we talked about today, you can expect that as we tarry God for this free gift of the Holy Spirit, Mama Suzette, he going to activate you. He's going to activate you. And now that advocate is the one who lives in you. That's why we're now the church, the people. It ain't the brick and mortar building. I thank God for this building. You hear me all this time. The council that has allowed us. This is a privilege. Whether you take the word of God into a riverbed, which we have, or a park bench, which we have, or at your home, God will be faithful to show up with his spirit. You come with an expecting and humble heart, you're going to receive some Holy Ghost word. Amen.
And so the free gift of the Holy Spirit, I just want to make sure we understand how this came. It was prophesied it was going to be poured out. Now it's poured out. Now it's even available to you and I. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit. Now turn with me, turn with me to the uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now that we laid the foundation, the coming of the Spirit of God to rest even on His children, we now are the temple of God that holds the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. And so now we get to learn about these beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse 4. When you get there, say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 4. And the word of the Lord reads, <clears throat> There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. That's very important that we understand that. I, I'm going to do it one more again. Okay, I'm going to read that thing again. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Verse 7, now to each one. The manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Stop, pause, let's reflect on this. This is so paramount to today's teaching. In the world, there's a bunch of counterfeit out there. Something that masquerades in holiness, but in the inside, there's something evil and wicked. And even the Word of God teaches us, beware of false apostles. Beware of false pastors. Beware of false teachers, prophets, etc. Beware. They'll come to you, you know, outwardly looking like a sheep, but inwardly they'll be a ravenous wolf. A wolf in what? Sheep's clothing. We call that a facade, right? You look one way, but in heart, you're totally different. In the very Old Testament, uh, King David was about to be anointed king, and, and King Saul was still, um, he was still the king at that time that betrayed God, you know, and and, the, and, and Samuel, Samuel the prophet, right? Samuel the prophet spoke, you know, with God. He was, you know, who's the, who's the next elected king? Right, Mama Sylvia? Who, who, who must be this tall, handsome brother, you know, right here? And that was the prophet saying that. Prophet was speaking that. And God spoke to the prophet and said, oh, Son, you, you, you got it way wrong. See, see, you human beings down there, even you prophets, you tend to look at the outward appearance. But I, God, in heaven, judge the attitude of your heart. See how that works? You may look a certain way, but God knows the intention of your heart. you outside. When you're really God-fearing, your outside matches your inside, right? And when that doesn't happen, if you remember, I was once a hypocrite myself. I once was a boss to a production line, and I would tell people what to do. You got to do this, and you got to do this. And there were sometimes I broke the very rule that I told them to do. When you don't practice what you preach, hello, I stand convicted. I've been guilty before. Thank, thank God for the blood and I do my best now to stay away from that. I don't like being called a hypocrite, especially now as a God-fearing man. 
point here is, when it talks about the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, it is not a gift that you should hoard and keep to yourself. Oh, I know all this revelatory information. Oh, I know a prophecy. I know a word of knowledge. Whatever the gift is, right? It is for the common good of the, to, to help a community of people. Did you know by acting out your faith helps the community, helps beyond the walls of the church, way beyond the walls of your household. It helps the community. So when Apostle Paul here was saying, it's a manifestation, how many have heard me preach before? I know when someone is manifesting in a, 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 a tongue, for example, of the he and that was prophesied, that you would speak in heavenly tongues. Heavenly tongues will many times bring word of knowledge, word of prophecy, we're going to talk about these gifts, but tongue from heaven that truly flows through a person will be to edify and to build up pe people, right? But when it doesn't incite the Spirit of God in me to speak in tongues, I know that it's counterfeit. God will show you the way when you have the Spirit of God in you. You will know the difference because the manifestation is true by the Spirit of God, which he gives you discerning eyes to see it plainly. The Spirit of truth makes himself plain so that everyone is unanimous receiving the truth and you know you may have come through those doors for the first time, but when the spirit of truth comes, there's a divine inspiration. You just know. Because we were made in his image. Right? But I want you to understand the difference between a counterfeit manifestation and a true manifestation of God. Because we read, God said, this advocate is the spirit of truth. And if you're discerning something that is untrue, hello? Hello? It may sound a certain way. I've heard people, we'll get into that later. Let's keep going. I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> uh, verse 8. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one spirit to another miracle miraculous powers to another prophecy to another listen distinguishing between spirits to another speaking what in different kinds of tongues and to still another what the interpretation of tongues all these are the work, listen, all of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. All of these are the work of one and the same Spirit. He distributes them, each one, just as he determines. The common thread in all of these gifts it is the same one spirit behind it, influencing these gifts. We're going to go through these nine gifts one by one, right? But these are the gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. And Sister Glory, we don't even have to put a price tag on it. We don't have to pay God nothing. It, it's a free gift to us, those of us. As the Word of God says, tarry God, wait for God, request to God. It is noble for us to want these gifts because if we really have in our heart, we want to help our hurting community, we're going to let the gifts flow. I know people right now, I, I have, <laughs> I've been trying to help for many, many years and prayerfully, they're afraid to act on their gifting. But only God can deal with that. Only God can give them the courage. As Jesus told his disciples, take courage, take courage. But there are some that have a gift in their womb. The, the knowledge of God has been revealed. You see the traces, the evidence. It's like praying, praying, praying. I had to pray for my wife. Probably five years, diligently, three, five years, something like that. Specific on these things that I've seen brewing in, in the womb. 
And now, she's just flowing. She's allowed God to use her. She's had to be, her faith had to be nurtured and built up. But I encourage us as we read and as we really talk and dissect each one of these gifts, we truly honor the value of what these gifts represent. And the thing is, is we may not all have the same gifts. Sister back there may have one gift. Brother over here may have another gift. My sister up here may have a different gift. But when we as a body of lovers, right? What I mean by that is the body of Christ. Christ, is, God is love. When we're about love, love moves. Love doesn't stay idle. It has to move, right? Love also among God-fearing believers. And listen, I, I'm just like many of you too. I don't subscribe to this denomination called Christianity. And the reason why is true Christianity has been so distorted that now Christianity that you look at in the world by and large is counterfeit. It does not represent the love of God, the agape love of God. It doesn't. It doesn't. Much hypocrisy, much counterfeit. But when you know the true word of God for yourself, can we just call each other God-fearing? When you're truly God-fearing, you know his eyes are upon you no matter where you go. Enoch says his eyes are upon you no matter where you go. King David says his eyes are upon you no matter where you go. And these were folks that were after God's heart. They spoke in their own testimonies. That's God-fearing. When God can speak to you and, and change your actions because you know you're about to do something wrong, that's an influence that he sees from on high that honors him because instead of doing something that you know was going to be wrong, his voice influenced you to do something right. That's God-fearing. I'm God-fearing. Amen. I know Muslim brothers that are like that, God-fearing. I know people who consider more uh, traditional that are God-fearing. And you know how I know? You're able to discern by their character from their heart. Amen. And so when we think about these gifts, it's very important. The same spirit is in operation in all of these nine gifts. And these nine gifts are not the total gifts of the Holy Spirit. Maybe another time we'll talk even more about some of the other gifts that God has revealed over the years that he uses through the scriptures and through our own testimony as well that lines up with the scriptures. But let's look at these, each one of these uh, gifts, okay? Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, right? One there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. Wisdom, let's talk about wisdom. That's a gift from God. For you to have a God-fearing, God-given wisdom. Wisdom is so important, especially for our kids, to counsel, right? Wisdom is that, you know, if I had to break it down from a, from a ministerial standpoint, right? Wisdom, I mean, if you go to a meeting where you know there's 12 people waiting to just chop your head, and I'm, I'm talking figuratively, right? You know that the customer is angry with you, and you've missed certain deliveries and commitments, and they're mad at you. They want to know why. When, when you're a praying, fearing man of God, he'll change that environment that you know they want to just cut they just want to cut you. He'll change that environment with words of, of resolution, resolve, problem solving. Wisdom would be spoken and then by the time you're done, you know I've had some customers come up to me and hug me. I'm thinking, wow, I, they had all these questions that I heard them over the phone, but something about being in the physical where God, if you're praying, Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm in the bathroom right now. I'm doing what I got to do. But I have this moment that I can just, I can pray to you in the spirit that before I go in that ravenous wolf uh, den in, in that office to meet all those angry uh, customers, Lord, bring resolution, bring a, a resolve for the benefit of all. 
And then you start to speak words that come from on high. And before you know it, everybody's ice cube mad dog face turn into a lovely smiling face, you know? Only God can change the atmosphere. Wisdom helps to change atmospheres like that because the words are guided such that it brings peace and harmony and it brings a resolution for everybody. It's not selfish. None of these gifts are selfish. None of them. That's how you know it's a true manifestation of God. Amen. Wisdom. Wisdom. That's a, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Have you noticed how sometimes some elders just have a gift? Sometimes they don't even know that they're using the gift and you see it from afar. You're like, man, thank you, Lord, that I have an elder like that in my life. I get to see it. Thank you, Jesus. I recognize it. I recognize it, right? Wisdom. Wisdom. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Word of knowledge. Now, word of knowledge and prophecy really go hand in hand. They really do. I've never seen anyone who didn't flow in the prophetic gift that didn't also flow with the word of knowledge. So I want to talk to these gifts back to back. I want to talk about the word of knowledge and the word of prophecy back to back. It's usually the one anointed by God. You know, we can, oh, Ashley, I see that you're a great teacher. You know, we want to recognize you as a teacher, right? Humans can do that. We appoint. Even the Word of God says the apostles and the pastors. We appoint. There's those kinds of things. But there's some things that even for the apostles and pastors, this hands off for us. And one of them is prophecy. Only God can anoint any of these gifts. So any of these gifts. But when we're talking about the office of like the fivefold, you hear me talk about the, this is one of the offices, prophecy. That only comes by the anointing of God. Only. And the gifts only come by the Spirit of God who distributes them. Amen. But the word of knowledge and the word of prophecy, I've always seen these two gifts in the office of prophet. Always. Now, I'm not saying I've seen everything. No, only God has seen everything under the heavens. I would, I would be boastful and arrogant to think that I've seen everything under the heavens. No, I haven't. Every day I learn something new. Hello. But it's been my experience that these two flow within the office of a prophet. What's the difference between the word of knowledge and a word of prophecy? Word of knowledge is a secret unveiled for the current time. A secret you wouldn't have known in the physical. You would have only known from the Spirit of God who gave you this gift and spoke a mystery to your ear that only you know. I might hear something right now. You wouldn't have heard it. Or maybe you've heard something right now and I didn't hear it. Because God intended me to have this secret knowledge for the current made known to me right now. The prophet operates in this gift always. I've never seen a prophet not operate in this. But prophecy is for something that which has not yet come to pass, but will eventually in the future come to pass. We call it also prediction, right? People make predictions. And there's a difference between a physical analysis, because you can analyze a lot of data in the physical, and from a, even a business standpoint, you can predict based on your analysis. This gift, prophecy, is greatly more deeply spiritual than that, because by patterns, you can learn by patterns. But the gift of prophecy is something that which is only known by the heavens, given to you for a future state to come. So that's the difference between the word of knowledge that we're talking about here and the word of prophecy. Word of knowledge is so powerful. You got kids acting up. They're lying to your face. And prayerfully, 
the word of knowledge says, bring this issue up that you knew nothing about and talk it over. And you'll see sometimes your kids like a deer in the headlights looking at you like, how did you know that? Uh, son, let me remind you. <laughs> Don't you know that I'm a God-fearing, praying man? Huh? Word of knowledge comes through dreams sometimes. Prophecy comes through dreams sometimes. Uh, Enoch calls these dream visions because a dream gives you a picture and imagery, but yet you are in your sleeping state. And God is really flooding the... Anybody who uh, watched the prophetic voice, right, Mama Suzette? A lot being revealed, both word of knowledge and prophecy, even through dream visions. I had one time at the men's recovery home as another example. I was talking to a brother, dear brother. He was just got out of uh, uh, prison. He battled, you know, uh, uh, crystal meth abuse, right? Um, well, learn it. And look, we're all adults up in here, okay? This is a true story. It's part of my testimony. We overcome evil by what? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I got to use that thing, right? And it helps to relate and inspire. But I'm, I'm dealing with a brother who had a same-sex, there, there was a rumor of some same-sex, didn't bring it up. But he wanted to talk to me after a day that I was, I was, I just got done with the word to encourage the brothers. We just had, you know, we ate, had fellowship, dinner, and he was like, hey, man, I want, I want to talk to you uh, in, in private. And he said, you know, the, a lot of things have been going on and this, and God was showing me in the spirit. Mama Edith, how he was dancing around the truth. He wanted help, but he was dancing around the core matter of, of what was taking place and trying to deflect and make it look like everybody else was in the wrong and poor old me, when you discern a pitiful spirit, it's selfish. Hello, right? It's a gift. Distinguishing of spirits is a gift. It's a gift. Right? But, but God gave me a word of knowledge. It was a secret I didn't know, Mommy, uh, Sylvia. I didn't know this secret until the Spirit of God spoke it into me. And it was for counsel. It was to help him be confronted lovingly. The word of God says the word is good for reproof, correction, right? Rebuke. And God loves those he what? Corrects and brings rebuke to. So God in a loving way was privately just brother to brother and I revealed to him hey something unnatural is going on and God is saying to get at the heart of this you have to help you got to confess this thing and he looked bewildered and after we talked a little while he was trying to he was trying to explain something and then all of a sudden the, the Lord spoke to me and said rebuke him that I do not lie I said, brother, God does not lie. And then the fear of God just hit him, boom. And then he broke. He said, brother, you're right. See, God uses these gifts at a chance to turn the wickedness. The word of God says that as you turn people from their unrighteousness and you help lead them on the right path, you cover with love a multitude of sin. There are sins beyond sins that just were forgiven because you helped turn someone from their unrighteousness and into the love and the righteousness of God. Right? But this, again, the gift is to edify, it is to build up, it is for the common, common good, right? Word of knowledge, revealed secrets in the now, revealed secrets in the now. <clears throat> To another, uh, by the same spirit, uh, gift of healing. Gift of healing. <clears throat> One of my disciples in Tahajale, New Mexico. Man, he's, he is um, the dance, the dance at a tent meeting really helped to bring healing even for them. The Navajo in the Navajo Nation, where they're learning, wow, 
I can love Jesus and hang on to my culture that defines me as a human, as a person, as my tribe, you know. In our Hispanic uh, culture, there's certain things that we, we do, but all under the God-fearing, all under God-fearing. And he's like, brother, because he tried to tell me one time, I can't, I don't think I could ever do these things because I had a white cowboy preacher say, I'm going to go to hell if you do this. You go to the ceremony, you're going to go to hell. And I told him, brother, you got to be careful with that because they're getting the scriptures wrong. You know, and, and anyways, just recently, church, healing has come to his heart. Healing such that a traditional family said, hey, brother, we know you're a minister over there. We, something about your church is different. Remember I told you about the right messenger, right? I've, I've, I've talked on that. But they're like, we want to invite you. You know what they were doing? Testing. And we were talking about test today. Testing your faith. They were testing him. Let me see if you're going to show me some love. You're going to judge me like all the other hypocritical, you know what I'm saying? But guess what? He went to that place, felt nothing but love, saw nothing but love in motion. And I said, okay, if it was love, what spirit was behind it? The Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. You have judged correctly. Like God would tell his prophets, what do you see? I see this. You have judged correctly. You know why? Because he's building us up. He's teaching us. But his heart was healed. He has a testimony that he went to a healer one time in his own Navajo nation. The man looked up to heaven. His eye, my friend said, I was so sick that my eyes were pale. I, was, I had death all over me. And the healer, the healer, listen, listen. The healer looked up to heaven, said a prayer, put his hands on him, and prayed. And now he has a testimony that he gets to go in front of a bunch of hypocritical Christians and say, you know what, I had a traditional healer touch me and heal me. What spirit do you think it was? All good gifts come from creator from heaven and earth, from the father of lights. All good gifts. If it was good, you should judge it by good. It was good. Healing. Healing of the heart. Healing of his body. This is a twofold thing now part of his testimony. Right? And so I, I, I tell us the gift of healing when you lay hands on people. The Word of God says, anoint them with oil, pray with them, with the, with the elders, and they will not, one, they'll be healed, two, they'll be forgiven of their sins. Because why? You come up by faith. Right? Some of you prayed under a tent meeting, and the gift of healing came down under that tent. And God gets all the glory. And see, when we honor God with these gifts, when we deflect His, when we try to steal that, oh, the anointing goes away. Because you just grieved His holiness. What He wanted to do out of His holiness and out of His love, you just grieved it. You just stole from it. Try to plagiarize it. Right? So all these gifts are for His glory. By the same one to another, miraculous powers. When you think of the gift of miracles, it was a straight up miracle shortly after that uh, tent meeting in 21. We had a river over here, right? It was like the, the devil's wash. Everybody was so scared and frantic by it. This is, part of our, this is part of our testimony. One of my disciples at that time was at the lower tier. I had to, I had to do a dedication. The Spirit of God fell upon that riverbed and us and the elders are seeing God manifest in the clouds and here we are and my brother said, oh man, do you feel that? I said, yes, I feel it. But we rededicated that riverbed, river of life. So even when I drive by it now, you know, I don't think about all the murders, all the drug uh, uh, overdoses and all the, the bad things that might have happened. That's for a chance of people to clear out their, their memory bank. By the time we left that place, they saw the clouds with God's eye on them. It meant 
meant something for them over there, but for us in the lower tier of that uh, riverbank, it meant something much for us because God was revealing a mystery that's even spoken of in the book of Romans. There was the hand of God through the clouds, and there was a fish and a scroll that the new covenant preached the right way was going to be attractive because Jesus told his disciples, and he was my disciple at that time, right? My brother, uh, I won't mention his name, but my brother was there. Got baptized under the tent, right? But what we realize is that God was bringing fulfillment to a mystery made known. Even upon indigenous lands, many had the new covenant already written in their heart. And that revelation came at that time. You know, God changed the clouds, said, look up. To them it was an eye, God's fear of the Lord is upon you. To us, it was this great revelation. That was a miraculous wonder. Only, and I got several of those with clouds alone. But that's a miraculous wonder that God will bring and use for the common good of people. Common good, common good. To another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits. Let's pause on this one. This is very important. Church. The church, the activated body of Christ, the lovers of God, the God-fearing. If there's a gift in this time and hour that we need more than any of the other ones, it's this one. For yourself, for myself, for even the, for our children to grow into, the, into the, the spiritual gift of distinguishing spirits. And in the physical, it's what character is in operation? Is it greed? Love of money? Pride? Envy? Lust? Hello, somebody. Right? Uh, uh, you name it. Anything that is you would consider a bad character is a clue. Good character comes from the same one spirit, right? We talked about this last week. But distinguishing, knowing the difference between right and wrong, and there's a way about it physically, but there's a way about it spiritually. We talked about milk and the word of God, the basic, the essentials. The physical is the basic milk stuff. There comes a time where we surpass just the understanding of what character is in operation. We get to the point where in our warfare, by the distinguishing and knowing between a good spirit and a bad spirit in operation, we get to tailor our warfare prayerfully and aim it intentionally according to what we see manifesting even in the spirit realm. The spirit realm is so important for us to learn and to value. But part of it is having this gift activated. And if you feel like, oh man, I, I've been a bad judge of character. Uh, you know, we all have weaknesses. I have to petition my weaknesses to the Lord too and say, Lord, I, I need help with this. Right? I, I'm a, you know, I, growing up I was always called short bus rider, a sped. <laughs> Look, but, but you know what? Your past doesn't define you. Your past don't define you. A lot of times your weaknesses become your strengths because when you, like me, a knucklehead, you know, once toe up from the flow up, right? You've learned to take your petitions to the Lord. Make all your petitions made known to God, creator of the heavens and the earth. Because then he'll take your weakness and make it your eventual strength. Somebody say amen. amen. That's a good God. But distinguishing spirits, important, very, very important. It will keep you from being arrogant because you will know what spirit is in operation. Arrogance that tries to masquerade in holiness, to try to cast out devils in houses, the devil will make a fool out of you. But distinguishing of spirits, then the right preparation takes place. You begin to fast and pray. God, Jesus says, hey, uh, some of these little spirits, they're not, they, they're not so hard to cast in my name, but some of these things become legions. They, 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 one big primary spirit attached to a hundred different small spirits. Before you know, you have a spiritual legion of spirits. 
And the depth of that warfare now requires some sacrifice and, and you have to fast and pray for some of these things. But by distinguishing the right spirit and spirits, you know what you're up against, Mama Suzette, and you know how to prepare for it. And when the time comes, you're going to take courage and you're going to watch a great move of God cast out wickedness in Jesus' name. Mm. to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. I want to make mention evidence of people being active with the Holy Spirit is not just by this being, you know, you got a lot of false teaching out there that says, oh, uh, you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes, that's one evidence. We're learning here that there's nine gifts, even spoken of in the book of Corinthians. Nine gifts. When you discern those gifts in somebody, you know they've been activated with the Holy Spirit. It is not. Some people have the gift of prophecy, but they don't speak in tongues. My disciple went to Hajjali. He's a great prophet. But he don't speak in tongues. Who gave him the gift of prophecy? The Holy Spirit. But he don't speak in tongues. So you see how false teaching is out there that will try to discourage you? Many people have even thought, oh, because I don't speak in I had a pastor once question. I, I was submitted under his leadership at that time. He, 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 he shared that with me, that many of my fellow ministerial workers around me, my, my, my colleagues essentially, right, they don't think that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit because I don't speak in tongues. That is a false teaching. It's only one evidence. But what is what is a tongue? What does the heavenly tongue do? Many times it is to reveal. For you, it's for self-edification. See, there's, there's two places. Privately and publicly when the Spirit uses heavenly tongues to manifest. And remember, it's a manifestation. So, if you see one, someone faking it, and by the way, uh, sorry, New Mexico, it's infiltrated your land a lot, Navajo Nation. I'm sorry, I got to be truthful and honest. But many out there in those lands falsely say, falsely say, third time's a charm, Pastor Kevin, falsely say that you can teach, a human being can teach another human being how to speak in tongues. False. Every one of these gifts we read in 1 Corinthians is a manifestation of the Spirit. You can't teach spiritual things in that way. Yes, you can read the Word of God in hopes that, like right now, we're, we're talking, we are teaching on spiritual things, but I can't teach you a manifestation. Only God brings the manifestation. I can't teach you how to make a certain sound and say, oh, call that tongue. But here's what the tongue does for us when it's a true manifestation. If it's done in public, it brings revelation and knowledge and edification to those who are in hearing. So they should always be interpreted. You got a lot of people sometimes that just like to yell and scream. I won't, even, I won't fake it. Right? But you know what I'm saying. And they're looking for you to look at them as if there's something great and holy. But look, true biblical tongue is interpreted when it's in public. When it's you, Sylvia, in your prayer closet and you start to manifest, it is a mystery, it is a word of knowledge, it is a prophecy, it is for your self-building up in the spirit. And yes, you can pray both intelligible words, English, and in other tongues and still be doing it in the spirit. Just because you pray, when we felt the Holy Spirit out, even little Arturo Jr. prayed us out today. I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. He was speaking intelligible English words, and from the faith of a child, the Spirit of God just came and boom, made his presence known. Right, Senior? So, don't ever let anybody tell you also that you have to speak in tongues in order to speak in your spiritual language. No. When you can split, I, I preached on that last week. You know, how to, you know how to pray in the Spirit and by faith. 
Okay, but the tongues in physical, in the, in the presence of, of people, it is to bring edification to that body. And for you, if it's in secret, it's, it is to build your faith up in the mysteries and in the knowledge of God. Amen. <clears throat> and still another, the interpretation of tongues. You know, when the gift of tongues fell on me, can I, can I be transparent with you, church? I had just read the Bible. God said, yeah, you ain't going to read it like most people read it, son. Um, and I didn't need some Sunday school teacher to convict me on this. This was me and God, the Holy Spirit, dealing with me. I just got saved and got a Bible. I made the commitment personally that in my living room, I was going to seek the face of the Lord. And I asked him every time, Lord, give me your word and spirit. I want it to come alive. And I would ask him that every time. Give me this in spirit. But after I read the Bible, cover to cover, boom, done with the book of Revelation. He said, when you're done with the book, of, when you're done with the read, you're going to give me some face time. There was going to be a moment where, where I'm with God, uh, uh, just me and him, and he's going to deal with me. Whatever he wanted to deal with me after doing that, obe that act of obedience. Remember this, church. I encourage you. Obedience. Your obedience to the invisible voice when it lines up with the word of God is greater than then sacrifice your obedience. So what did he do? He opened up. I mean, it was like we were talking about Fourth of July earlier. I don't celebrate it no more. I used to. But it was like firecrackers going off in my spirit place, in my secret place, in my, in, in, in my closet. Just pearls of lightning and just a pitch black, dark in there. But all these sparkles and everything. And I'm crying, I'm weeping, and, and the glory of God just shone through all of that. And then inside, it was like a tunnel. Remember how you speak through a long tunnel, and you can speak over here, and it, it travels. There was a voice that was traveling, and it started to manifest. And as it was manifesting the vision, what that heavenly tongue, as it was manifesting, God gave me the vision of what it was. But it freaked me out. And then that which was holy was trying to manifest in me. I grieved in my spirit. And he's forgiven me, but I broke faith. It freaked me out. I ain't going to lie. But when it was restored, by that time I had repented. I had prayerfully asked God for forgiveness. Lord, what you wanted to do was something very holy. And I rejected it. I'm sorry. Because when it came back, after I had repented, asked for forgiveness for that, it came back so strong, you know, and, and, and I'm like, okay, Lord, you giving me this, I see the vision, but if you're going to do this, if there ain't nobody else that's going to be willing to interpret, I want, this is the only gift I ever asked God for, I want to know how to interpret it, Mama Suzette. If I just started manifesting, I said, Lord, I, I, I want to know if somebody else does not stand up by faith and interpret, because that can happen too. And you know what he told me, uh, Mama Sylvia? He said, interpret it. So I followed the vision that he gave me, and he said, you interpreted well. But now I can tell you, I believe the last time was after the sun dance came in here, we, it just manifested, but I was able to share it with you guys, right? Some of you were still out there at the, at the, um, at the sunrise, but some of you had come. But it's always the gifts, speaking in tongues, prophecy, word of knowledge, mysteries, right? Faith, wisdom, it is a gift to give freely. He saves us freely, and his grace was shed for us freely. When we surrender to God, the gifts that he has in us is to be used freely to help people. The advocate is he, the Holy Spirit, that gives these gifts and distributes them according to his will. So if you know you got some gifts down in there, Ruin. It is good for you. It's good for me. Terry God.
guide me in this. Do you want me to use this gift, oh Lord? Give me the courage to do it. Because it's one thing to be revealed something. You may know. It's in there. You know. It's different to do this though, right? No. I'm going to step out of faith. It's an uncomfortable zone. I'm trusting on you, Lord. I know you're calling me to do it, right? But when we do, that act of faith in obedience to him will never return you or I void because his word says so. His word never returns you and I void. Amen. So ending notes here real quick. Um, number one, holiness, listen church, holiness preserves the gifts. Holiness protects the spiritual gifts that come from heaven and go to you. It is through holiness. Well, does that mean I gotta be a perfect person? Let me, you know, let me just encourage all of us crooks in here, sinners saved by grace. Apostle Paul was distinguished from the rest of the apostles that literally seen Christ physically. Apostle Paul wasn't that one. Wasn't until he was on the road to Damascus to go kill and martyr some Christians Right, himself. That God then anointed him eventually to be apostle, but God showed up in a bright light, blinded him for three days, humbled him. Apostle Paul became a Christian murderer to a Christian apostle for on fire for Christ Jesus and learned the New Testament not because of written words, but by his Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit. Amen. Apostle Paul became super apostle. He spoke more in tongues than the rest of the apostles. The word of God says so. He helped to heal people, laid hands on people, and they got healed. Sometimes it was the shadow of his cloak. And yet in his old age, he started becoming blind himself. You may have seen yourself lay hands on people. They get healed. You lay it on yourself, and you're like, oh, Lord, I got some elbow pain. He might just have you <laughs> deal with that elbow pain for a while because he's, Mama Suzette, he's, he's will, you, will you bless me with your suffering? Huh? That's another one coming. Blessing God in suffering. But see, there's, he only knows why he does what he does. And when he does it, you just got to honor it. Don't be like Moses at the Rock of Meribah the second time where he tried to plagiarize God's glory. God brought the wa water out of the rock for them corrupt, wicked Israelites. And Moses and his brother Aaron, he went up before them and said, oh, shall we, meaning me and my brother, the high priest Aaron, do this thing? They stole the glory of God. Now God still allowed the water to come out. But Moses broke faith and forfeited God's holiness. Let us not be that way. When the gift comes, reverence God and give him the glory. Right away, I don't care if you raise the dead. Been stinking for three days and you laid hands on that dead body that's under decomp uh, what is it? decomposition. And it raises like Lazarus from the dead. You immediately give God the glory. Don't you take that. Don't you steal that. That's just how valuable these gifts are. And it's from the holiness that preserves these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Number two, if we have to talk about that, what takes it away? Certainly unholiness. But one of the, one of the, the main ways that people were once holy became wicked, it is out of hypocrisy. Always remain faithful to God. Be honest. Even when you screw up, be honest. Accept responsibility. See, the tongue came and it went, but it came back. Job went through hell and high water. He said, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away, but what was his comeback? God blessed him over seven, what was it, sevenfold over that that he previously had. 
But when you protect in holiness, when you, even when you sin and you learn, learn to live a lifestyle of, Lord, I did it again. Apostle Paul, that was my point, going back to Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said, in all that I want to do that is good, I find this battle in me that wants to do the opposite. My wife just left, oh Lord, this is a battle. I, I fix my eyes on pornography. Lord, help me. The only chance in this struggle, this thorn in the flesh, is by taking your pain to God. Apostle Paul said, therefore, in all that I want to do, I find myself not doing. Hello? That means that even Apostle Paul sinned against God. But he repented. He lived a lifestyle of repentance. And he said, wretched man that I am, who will save this stained, riddled body of sin? But thanks be unto God Almighty, who loves me, who came to save me. Thank you. Salvation in Christ Jesus. He says, now I don't brag about the things that I do well. And he said, even if I did do that, I would not be telling a lie. Humility, humility, humility. But rather, I brag about my weaknesses. You know, when we confess one to another, you know, especially when we have that trust, man, we can expect, the Word of God says that, that when, you, when you confess one to another and you pray for one another, you can expect healing. It's because it takes humility to do that. But how much more? With God's and so Apostle Paul said, even though I got this thorn in my flesh, it tempts me sometimes. Sometimes I fall short. Sometimes I overcome uh, by the grace of God. But if I do fall short, I've got grace to cover me because Jesus looked at him and said, you know, you pled to me three times. You're, you, you're done with yourself. You think that you're not going to be saved because you battle sinful thoughts or sinful things. But Jesus says, in your weakness... I, God in heaven, is then made strong out of what? Our humility. And he would say, my grace is sufficient. When you value the grace, I value the grace, it'll be there at all times in abundance. But we value it. So by valuing the holiness preserves these gifts you start walking away from the things that keep you close to God, a relationship with God, your devotion to God, and you stop having that prayer for life, you start sinning and you don't even, you know, I, I used to sin so arrogantly that I didn't care. Now, at least I know his eyes are upon me. Lord, I'm thinking the thing, but Lord, I'm, I'm trying to crucify my, I'm going to put this thing under subjection. That maintains your holiness. A sinner who, who, who repents becomes holy. Let, let me repeat that, church. A sinner who repents becomes holy. There's only one who's never sinned. And he's the one that we honor and we worship invisibly. And he's the one that distributes the gifts to us so that we can help the heart of them. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Wanted to close out. Holiness preserves, certainly unholiness, and things like hypocrisy take that gift, those gifts away from us. Certainly we want to, pre we want to preserve those gifts. Not undervalue them, but value them. Holy Spirit, Father God in heaven, Jesus the Christ, who came to be a perfect Example for us in the physical. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that these gifts would become activated in us and that you would give us the courage to act them out. Act them out in our families. Act them out into the hurting community. That we would, we would honor these gifts. Whether it's a gift of, of knowledge where you're revealing a mystery, that we would be responsible with the gifts. And that when we, when we see your glory be manifested and, and flow through us as just mere mortal uh, vessels that flow the holiness of the Holy Spirit in and through us to reach a hurting people, to bring healing for the common good of a community, 
Father, that we would honor and glorify you every time. Lord, we thank you. We know that there's a, a, a hurting world riddled with evil. We need these gifts in operation to help combat and push back darkness. And for a chance that we would see others go back on the right journey and path that leads to a fruitful life. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We pray that this word be an everlasting blessing for our hearts. Seal it with your love. Seal it with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your gifts that operate by the distributor of Christ and Lord and Savior Jesus. We thank you for these gifts that, that you give freely. Those of us who feel the tug of the Holy Spirit and bring in a gift, Lord, may we pray and water ourselves in prayer and ask you, petition you, Lord, to activate these gifts where we see them, where we see the evidence of these gifts starting to emerge from within our hearts, within our our countenance within our spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We love you. We ask you, Lord, be with us, protect us, even in this time of great darkness upon the earth. Help us with our families, oh God. Protect us, preserve us. Lord, we pray for the food today as well, and we thank you for all that you provide us. You're Jehovah Jireh, the, the God who provides, and we thank you for the 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 the, the food and the sacrifice that went with those who, who made it and, and, and contributed the potluck on here today. Lord, we ask you to just continue to bless our fellowship on here today. Get us all home safe and sound. In the mighty, matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Can we give God a great hand clap of praise? Our live viewers, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Crenshaw, Rodriguez, Living on the Rock Ministries. And until next time, we love you. God bless you. Please consider buying the book, Unforgivable Sin, Blaspheme Against the Holy Spirit, a Holy Spirit-inspired teaching. All proceeds for the next three years will go to the ministry's missions. Thank you and God bless you.